A political faction is a group of individuals, such as a political party, a trade union, or other group with a common political purpose. Members of factions band together as a way of achieving these goals and advancing their agenda and position within an organization. Factions are not limited to political parties, they can and frequently do form within any group that has some sort of political aim or purpose. The Latin word factio denoted originally either of the chariot teams that were organized professionally by private companies in ancient Rome, each recognizable by characteristic color and arousing support to hysteria similar to that in modern sports fans. These teams were not unlike gladiator schools, but the lethal nature of that entertainment meant few performers lasted long enough to build up similar crowd loyalty to the team. While the fighters rarely actually teamed up, but rather fought duels or beasts, in time, political currents could become associated with such a team, although precisely how this happened is unclear. In Byzantine Constantinople, two such chariot factions, Blue and Green, repeatedly made or broke the claims of candidates to the imperial throne. Occasionally, the term faction is still used more or less as a synonym for political party, but with opprobrious sense conveying the imputation of selfish or mischievous ends or turbulent or unscrupulous methods, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. In his dictionary, Samuel Johnson dismissively defined Whig as the name of a faction. Similarly, in the tenth installment of the Federalist Papers, James Madison defines a faction as a number of citizens whether amounting to a minority or majority of the whole, who are united and actuated by some common impulse of passion, or of interest, adverse to the rights of other citizens, or to the permanent and aggregate interests of the community. In plain English this is a group that pursues self-interest at the expense of the greater good. Aims of Factions the aims of a political faction are as diverse as the different types of bodies within which they appear. Typically, however, they include advancing a particular policy or policy agenda, preventing the adoption of alternative policies and supporting given individuals to positions of power within the organization or in the wider political world. A faction can primarily be based around supporting a given person or group, or a single major aim, with little in the way of common agenda otherwise, or it can have a comprehensive and definitive set of policies. Either way, factional politics typically revolve around personality, with a few individuals playing key roles, acting as a magnet for like-minded people, leading the activities of the faction, and acting as a prominent voice for the shared objectives of the faction. Such individuals can be referred to by a variety of names, such as power brokers, or factional chiefs, organization. Factions differ in the amount of organization and internal structure they possess. On the left, these may take the form of tendencies or platforms. Most factions are very loose organizations, having no definitive list of members, but some factions have a formal internal structure, with membership lists, regular meetings, official positions, such as negotiators, conveners, whips, and organizers and of definitive policy position on every issue affecting the broader organization. Such factions will typically be binding, that is, they rely upon all members casting their votes in accordance with the preordained official stance of the faction. Operation of Factions in political organizations that are democratic in structure, factions rely heavily on securing enough votes to win important ballots. This process is sometimes referred to as doing the numbers. Having the numbers will allow the faction to push policies it supports and elect its members to powerful positions within the broader organization. If one faction develops within an organization, there will usually be at least one other that develops in opposition to it. Opposing factions will try to match each other's level of organization and internal discipline, but will also engage in negotiations and trade-offs to ensure that the organization's activities are not compromised and that every group has a chance to obtain at least some of its goals. Key to the operation of an organized faction is the existence of a power base. 
This will typically be some office, division or branch of the broader organization over which the faction has effective control. Sometimes a power base may be an external or affiliated organization that is involved with the broader organization in some way. A power base serves several key functions. It acts as a recruitment center for new members, and promotes homogeneity within the membership. It can be used as an organizing center for factional events and activities. It functions as a springboard, advancing the career of selected factional members and allowing them to gain skills that will increase their effectiveness and clout. Effects of Factions the existence of a factional system can have serious negative consequences for a political organization. If factional strife becomes intensive in public, the organization may suffer from perceptions of disunity. Taken one step further, if the conflict is particularly severe, it may cause ruptures within the organization that seriously impede its effectiveness, leading to breakup or collapse of the organization. To avoid harm to the organization, factional operations are usually conducted under strong secrecy and with minimal public scrutiny. This, however, can lead to the proliferation of unethical behavior. Warfare between the factions may lead to tactics such as ballot box stuffing, stackouts, membership fraud, and other generally fraudulent conduct. Individuals who abandon a faction may be subject to intense personal vendettas where their former comrades go about sabotaging their careers. A climate of intense factional conflict can also motivate individuals to focus on attacking their factional enemies rather than furthering their broader organization. Despite this, the benefits of factional systems are often overlooked. It is often incomprehensible to outsiders why members of a broader organization would engage in factionalism. This stems from the assumption that the natural factional relationship is one of conflict and strife, when in fact, factions are often able to engage in productive cooperation. In any political organization there are likely to be many highly opinionated and passionate people. The existence of a factional system allows its operations to be more predictable and stable. Compromise and give and take between factions allows the organization to operate without having to satisfy the whims of many different, uncompromising individuals who might otherwise cause a split. So, somewhat counterintuitively, factionalism can actually promote organizational harmony. Factions also help to broaden and diversify the organization's appeal. A person who might otherwise find the organization's goals unattractive might be persuaded to support a faction within it whose goals are closer to their own. Just as a democratic government is often invigorated by a strong opposition, so having a number of distinct points of view with an organization can energize it and allow it to perform its role more effectively. It is also highly unlikely that any sizable political organization is wholly united in purpose. So arguably factions simply represent a way of managing pre-existing differences within the organization. The founding fathers of the American Constitution explicitly warned against the dangers of party factionalism. Madison, Hamilton, and Washington expressed the belief that factions would create divides that would ultimately dismantle the government. These sentiments can be found in the Federalist Papers, specifically Federalist 10 and 51 written by Madison.